Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis brought by Shankar IS Academy. Today, 21st September. Displayed here are the articles that we are going to discuss. The first article, volatility in food price remains a contingent risk, says RBI. This article is taken from the newspaper, the Indian Express. The second article, two new drugs for Alzheimer's disease, spark controversy. This article is taken from the newspaper, the Hindu. The third article, blockchain, smart materials among innovative projects mooted in PM solar scheme. This article is taken from the newspaper, the Hindu. So without much delay, let's get into our discussion with the first article. Look at this newspaper article taken from Indian Express. Volatility in food prices remains a contingent risk, says RBI article. This newspaper article says that according to RBI, the inflation rate in July and August is below 4 percentage, but the food price volatility is a remaining risk. Addition to that, the headline inflation also slightly increased to 3.7 percentage due to unfavorable base effect with the food inflation 5.3 percentage. So, let us discuss more about this from the prelims point of view. First, we will start with the basic question, what is inflation? We have discussed this many times. Inflation refers to a gradual loss of purchasing power re reflected in a broad pri rising prices over period of time. Or simply we can say it is a constant rise in the general price level. That means the commodities prices will be increasing rapidly or slowly and eventually it will affect the purchasing power of the consumers and this will create an, a chaotic condition in the economy. What are the measurements we are using to understand the inflation? First, we will have the consumer price index and we are also using the wholesale price index. Consumer price index is measured by the National Statistical Office, while the wholesale price is measured by the Office of Economic Advisor under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And both index uses almost the same year as the base year. In the case of consumer price index, it is 2000 toll. In the case of wholesale price index, it is 2011 toll. Base year means, while coming to the inflation targeting, RBI uses consumer price index as benchmark because it reflects the retail prices paid by the consumers. So, therefore, the consumer price index will give a more accurate representation of how the inflation impacting the cost of living. In the beginning, we said a word that is headline inflation. What is headline inflation? Headline inflation measures the total inflation within an economy including volatile commodities such as food and fuel and also other essential commodities. How the headline inflation is measured? It is measured based on year-on-year -year percentage changes in wholesale price index or consumer price index. What is the purpose of measuring headline inflation? It is primarily used to understand the short-term impact of inflation on the economy. And it is also used to study how the inflation reflects or impacts the retail consumers because it includes essential commodities such as food and energy. And it is also useful in framing medium to long-term monetary policy. Coming to the core inflation, what is core inflation? Core inflation measures the inflation excluding volatile items such as food and fuel to understand a stable and more accurate picture of the current inflation. And how it is calculated? It is calculated through subtracting food and fuel from the headline inflation. We don't have a particular index or particular report to understand about the core inflation. It is, it is calculated by dividing. It is calculated through subtracting food and fuel from the headline inflation. So, therefore, the core inflation is equal to food headline inflation minus food and fuel because the food and fuel are volatile. And what is the purpose of core inflation? It is used to show the economic status of, of a country. At the same time, it is also used to understand the current or underlying inflationary pressure on the economy. And is, it is very useful to frame short-term monetary formulation. It is also useful to frame short-term monetary policy because, because it excludes temporary price shocks. So, in this topic, we discussed uh, what is inflation, what is headline inflation and what is core inflation. So, based on our discussion, try to answer this prelims question. The question is, which of the following best describes headline inflation? Option A, it measures the inflation rate excluding food and energy. Option B, it, it includes the overall inflation in the economy, in including all goods and services. Option C, it only includes the prices of essential commodities. And option D, it uh, measures the inflation rate of non-essential luxury items. The answer is option B. It includes the overall inflation in the economy, including all goods and services. Because we know one of the purposes of headline inflation is to understand how the inflation is impacting the retail consumers. Therefore, the answer is option B. So, with this, we are moving to the next article. Look at this newspaper article, Two Drugs for Alzheimer's Disease Spark Controversy. After decades of research, the scientists developed two new drugs, that is Lekenmap and Donanmap to treat Alzheimer's and they claimed that the two drugs will reduce the cognitive decline by 30 percentage in the early stages of Alzheimer's patient and this claim has become a matter of controversy within the medical community. So, let us discuss more about Alzheimer's in this context. So, what is Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's is a brain disorder affecting memory and thinking skills of a person. It is caused due to abnormal deposition of proteins such as amyloid plugs and tau tangles in the brain 
and this deposition of proteins will lead to damages in the brain cells and finally results in cognitive decline. Alzheimer's is one of the common causes for dementia. What are the key symptoms of Alzheimer's? The key symptoms of Alzheimer's includes memory loss, confusion that is disassociation from the reality or from the present situation and difficulty with the daily tasks and also it includes changes in the personality or behavior. The last two symptoms are the res result of memory loss and confusion. Coming to the risk factors, the risk factors includes aging. The people may develop Alzheimer's with the aging. The people with the family history of Alzheimer's are at risk of developing Alzheimer's and sometimes injuries, head injuries due to accidents or other reasons can also result in Alzheimer's in the future and there are also other factors such as non-communicable diseases such as diabetes and high blood pressure. This can also lead to Alzheimer's in the future. So, we will often use the word Alzheimer's and dementia interchangeably in certain situations. So, what is the difference? Both are brain disorder. But dementia is a general term used to refer the cognitive decline while Alzheimer's is a specific disease. It's a specific disease causing dementia and nearly and Alzheimer's is the reason behind 60 to 70 percentage of dementia cases. Now, we are going to see certain statistics related to the impact of dementia and Alzheimer's globally. Globally, 55 million people are suffering from conditions like dementia and Alzheimer's and dementia Dementia is a seventh leading cause behind the global death. In the case of India, recently India is recording an increase in cases of Alzheimer's and dementia due to aging population. According to United Nations Population Fund in the year 2022, the aged population is around 10 percentage of total population. But in the year 2050, it is expected to be around 20 percentage. That means almost double. Therefore, it is high time for India to take steps to deal with these kind of problems and we have taken and conditions like dementia and Alzheimer's can also impact families through due to increasing healthcare cost and it can also put a great pressure on caregivers. Coming to the gender disparity, women are most affected due to the brain disorders like dementia and Alzheimer's because the mortality rate and disability from these kind of brain disorders are very high in women but at the same time they are also playing a key role in dealing with the problems like Alzheimer's and dementia because they provide around 70 percentage of dementia care hours. Now we are going to see certain steps taken by the India to deal with uh, problems like Alzheimer's and dementia. The Department of Science and Technology supports early detection, intervention and research of Alzheimer's and dementia through cognitive science research initiative. And we have national mental health program. It, it includes, it supports the mental health. It also includes dementia care. And the next step is AIMS and the National Brain Research Center and others have researched, others are conducting researches in conditions like Alzheimer's and also developed a software called Kalpana for early mental health diagnosis. And the major step is Aishman Bharat. It is focusing on early detection, awareness and caregiver support. So, in this topic, we discussed what is Alzheimer's and what is dementia and what is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia and how it is impacting nationally and globally and what is the importance of taking efforts to deal with the, the problems like Al Alzheimer's and dementia at the present context. So, with this understanding, try to answer this prelims question. The question is, consider the following statements regarding Alzheimer's disease. Statement 1, Alzheimer's disease is a type of dementia that primarily affects memory, thinking and behavior. Statement 2, it is a curable neurodegenerative disorder. Statement 3, Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia worldwide. Which of the following statements given above is or are correct? Option A, 1 and 2 only, option B, 1 and 3 only, option C, 2 and 3 only and option D, 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is option B, 1 and 3 only. It is a curative, therefore the statement 2 is incorrect. Alzheimer's is a non-curable neurodegenerative disorder, but it is a type of dementia. So, with this, we will move to the next article. Look at this newspaper article, Blockchain Smart Materials Among Innovative Projects Mooted in PM Solar Scheme. This article is talking about the innovative projects under the Pradhan Mantri Surya Ghar Mapt Bijali Yojana. Let us discuss more about this. First, we will start with an overview about the scheme Pradhan Mantri Surya Ghar Mapt Bijali Yojana. It is a 75,000 crore scheme by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. The objective of the scheme is to promote rooftop solar installations to encourage self-generation of electricity. Coming to the new innovative projects under the Mapt Bijali Yojana, it is a subcomponent worth of rupees 500 crore. The focus of the innovative project is on innovative rooftop solar technologies such as blockchain based on solar trading, digital solutions for the rooftop solar 
technologies smart building materials and uh, ev integration that is electric vehicle integration so these are the innovative projects focusing under the pradhan mantri mafut bijli yojana so coming to the project details the project is taken under the mafut bijli yojana it should be completed within 18 months and the government will be funding up to 60 percentage of the project and the maximum limit of fund per project is 30 crore now we will see the impact of the mafut bijli yojana the maximum subsidy per household is 78000 and almost 1.33 crore families have registered under the mafut bijli yojana and out of this 1.3 crore family 3.75 lakh families have installed the rooftop solar technologies now we are going to see other solar schemes in india the first major scheme is pradhan mantri kisan urja suraksha evam uttan maha abhiya this scheme is also known as pradhan mantri kusum scheme the scheme is aiming to provide financial and water security to the farmers through adopting solar technologies under the scheme the government is planning to build a 10000 megawatt decentralized ground mounted grid connecting all renewable power plant the scheme is also looking to install 20 lakh stand alone solar pumps to support the agriculture and the scheme is also looking for solarization of 15 lakh grid connected pump and the second major initiative is rooftop solar program phase 2 the scheme is aiming to increase the installation of rooftop solar technologies in residential commercial and industrial sector under the scheme the beneficiaries will receive a subsidy up to 40 percentage for 3 kilowatt and 20 percentage subsidy for 3 to 10 kilowatt the target of this rooftop solar program phase 2 is to achieve 40 gigawatt rooftop energy capacity by 2022 and the next major initiative is solar park scheme the scheme is aiming to facilitate the development of large scale solar projects through solar park and the main objective of the scheme is to set up 50 solar park with a capacity of 40000 megawatt and the central government will provide financial assistance to the states to set up the solar parks under this solar park scheme and the next major initiative is development of solar cities the objective of this scheme is to reduce the energy demand up to 10 percentage in selected cities by promoting renewable energy and that includes solar too the objective the scheme is looking to establish 60 solar cities across india and the next key initiative is atal jyoti yojana the objective of the scheme is is the installation of solar street lights in semi urban rural and remote areas the scheme atal jyoti yojana phase 2 is targeting installation of 3 lakh street lights in remote and uh, underdeveloped area underserved areas so with this we are coming to the conclusion for this topic so in this topic we discussed uh, pradhan mantri surya ghar muft bijli yojana and the new innovative projects under it and its objective and then we discussed the other key solar schemes in india so in this background try to answer this prelims model question the question is what is the main role of solar energy corporation of india option a to provide solar panels for households option b to implement the solar projects tenders and auctions option c to develop solar cities across india and option d to regulate solar power tariffs in india the correct answer is option b to implement the solar projects tenders and auctions with this we are coming to the conclusion for today's newspaper analysis if you like the video hit the like button and give your feedback or comment and also share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy and before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive the on time update thank you have a nice day